Okay, there we go. Now we're recording. Um, so you guys have been looking at welding. We've been talking about welding, um, looking at some welding videos in class. We've been talking about equipment packets and looking at the equipment that we're going to use. This Friday, if you guys are able to come into our open lab, we're going to be doing some actual welding. Um, this week, we're going to focus on arc welding. And I'm going to show you, um, you've already watched a couple of videos on arc welding. I'm going to cover a couple of the items that we're, were not covered in those videos, as well as what I'm looking for for you guys when you're cutting your metal out and prepping your metal, getting it ready to go. So um, if you're looking at that worksheet, um, I will try to cover everything in that worksheet. If I miss anything, because I'm presenting, I'm not going to see you guys chat in a chat box. You'll have to turn your mic on and actually ask a question out loud um, because I'm not going to be looking at my computer. I'm going to be looking at the equipment that I'm going to be working with. As you can see, um, because I'm going to be using the equipment, I've got my safety glasses on. Um, the clothes that I'm wearing for today because I'm going to be getting set up to weld, we want to make sure your clothes don't have any frizzies on them, especially your pants. No holy jeans with frizzies on them, no torp. Um, pants or shirts that have any kind of tattered cloth and en cloth ends on them because that cloth will catch on fire so if you're going to come in on friday and you're going to weld make sure you're not wearing any holy jeans any tattered pants any tore up um, clothing because it's not really that safe so we're gonna i'm gonna be mobile i'm gonna be walking around here so you guys got to kind of bear with me when we're doing this um when we start working in the shop to weld. The first thing we need to do is we need to get some metal cut out and we need to prep our metal. One of the primary tools that we're going to be using for cutting metal is this machine right here. This is called the iron worker. And if we look at the iron worker, trying to get it there, you can see that there's a shear underneath here. We have to slide our metal underneath um, this guard bar right here, the guard bar is basically as far as you ever want to put your fingers. You don't want your fingers under it. You don't want your fingers behind it. We always keep our metal back here. But basically, we're going to slide our metal in there, and then we're going to step on the foot pedal down there. So I'm going to give you just a demonstration. The iron worker is really, really simple to use. Um, there's nothing overly complicated about it. Uh, if you had me in ninth grade metals, you probably used this before. If not, um, I'll, I'll go through it with you a little bit. So we're going to turn the iron worker on. There's an on switch right here, big off switch right here. Oops, i got to plug it in first. Okay, so we're going to turn the iron worker on. You can hear it makes a fair amount of noise. We're going to take our sheet metal, slide our sheet metal in. When we're welding, you want a piece of metal about the size of your hand. So we're going to cut a piece of metal off about the size of your hand. I'm going to put the sheet metal in. Keep my hands behind the guard bar right here. Sheet metal flat on the table. Keep your sheet metal flat on the table. And then we're going to push the pedal down. See the piece of metal we cut off right here? It's still, it's about the right width. So the width is about the width of my hand, but it's too long. So we're going to cut it this way right now. Again, slide on the table. Now we've got a piece of metal about the size of my hand. That's what we're looking for right there. When we're done with the iron worker, make sure you shut it off. Shut the iron worker off. Take your scrap metal, put it back on the pallet of welding metal back here. Don't leave your scrap metal sitting out because we trip over it. What bar, what okay. bar on the iron worker are we keeping our fingers behind? The, the guard bar right here. Keep your fingers behind the guard bar. Don't put your fingers under it 
or behind it. Thank you for asking a question, Joel. Any other questions on the iron worker? Okay, so now we got our metal cut off. You're gonna notice that our sheet metal, there's a steel plate that we're working with. It's quarter inch plate. This is what we're gonna arc weld on. This stuff is all rusty. It's rusty because we got it donated free from Winnick Supply. So big kudos to them for donating the metal. You don't want to weld on this. Welding on rusty metal will always give you a poor weld. Um, we can do it, but you're not going to get the best weld. So we want to clean our metal up. So now we're going to go take a look at how to clean the metal up. Was that a question for me, Sally, or are you just... Okay. You got to turn your mic on, Sealy. Gretchen, do you have a question or no? Okay. So one of the primary tools that we're going to use for cleaning up our metal is the wire wheel. Um, this is a grinder. You guys already did the grinder worksheet. Um, which went through a lot of the different components of how you're supposed to use the grinder. Think, uh, different parts of the grinder you should be aware of. Everybody see this okay. Notice the wheel is going to spin in a downward rotation. So that wheel is spinning down, which means when it grabs your part, your part's gonna get forced down. Knowing that, you always make sure that you have your part flat on the tool rest. This is the tool rest or the work rest. Make sure your part is flat on that rest when you're grinding. If you pick your part up in the air, if I try to pick my part up in the air, it's gonna grab my part, it's gonna rip it down and jerk it out of my hand. The other thing you should be aware of, um, when I am grinding, this wire will tear me up if I get my fingers in there. So I always recommend if you're using the wire wheel, we're gonna hold on to your metal with a pair of pliers. Let me grab a pair of pliers really quick. So when I go to grind this rust off the metal, I'm gonna have the wire wheel running over the top of my metal right here. I wanna clean this rust off so that it's uh, nice and pretty clean. Um, if this if it was any worse than this, I'd probably actually take an angle grinder and grind it down to bare, bare metal. If we were doing um, any kind of test welding, we'd want to grind it to bare metal. Right now, for what you guys are going to do in the lab, we just want to get this outside surface metal off of there. So I'm going to grab a hold of it with the pliers like this, and I'm going to stand my metal on end, just like this, on the wire wheel. When I'm holding it on the wire wheel, I want to grind it from the middle down. I don't want to grind any higher than the middle. If I try to grind it like this, and that wire catches the top edge of my metal, what's it gonna do when that wire grabs the top edge of my metal? What's it gonna do to my metal? Nobody. It's gonna throw it across the room. It's gonna throw it across the room, and it's gonna throw it across the room very violently. So. When we're grinding, we want to make sure our part is flat on the tool rest, just like this. And we're going to grind from the middle of it down while I hold on to it with the pliers. Um, this part's big enough. I probably don't need a pliers, but it's just a good practice to hold your metal with the pliers. If you stick your finger in there, it's going to tear your finger up. If you put your pliers in there, it's just going to make your pliers nice and shiny. So we don't care about that. So grinding the metal, grinding the rust off your metal, you turn that on. I'm going to try to get this so you guys can see this, okay? I'm going to... And we can see on the metal right here where it cleaned off the rust. 
where it didn't clean off the rust. So then we just flip your part over and we do it on the bottom half of the metal to clean off the rest of the metal. This part, this part's just a little bit too big to fit into this small of a grinder. So then I have a bigger grinder and a bigger wire wheel over by the back shop or by the other storage door. We could use that one and it would take that off uh, a little bit better. Or we could just cut a little bit smaller part. If my part was just a little bit narrower, I, it would fit into this grinder a little bit better. Um, but that's the gist right there. If you can get your metal down to about that level of clean, we can weld on it pretty well. Um, you just don't want to weld on that level of rust. So questions on the wire wheel? Questions on the wire wheel? Okay, let's go ahead. All right, so then we're gonna go over to the belt disc sander. If we are doing a butt weld, if we are doing a lap weld, we want to create a really nice tight weld or excuse me, a really nice tight joint. Um, this one's gonna be a little bit trickier for me because the disc sander is a little bit taller. Maybe I'll come around over here. There, we can see the disc sander, it's a little bit taller. So the disc sander has a shield. We can put the shield up right here. I'm gonna move the disc, move this all the way up just so it's out of your way. Can everybody see this disc sander okay? Looks like we can see that, right? If I'm gonna do a butt weld, I wanna make sure I have a nice flat edge on my metal. And that should butt up against another nice flat edge. If your edges line up when you're trying to weld and you have a gap in there, like there's a gap between my fingers right there, when you're welding, if you hit that gap, you're gonna burn right through your metal. So when you're welding, the tighter that joint is together, the tighter that joint fits, the better your weld will be, the cleaner your weld will be. If you have a weld that has gaps in it or holes in it, you're always trying to fill in, um, you're always trying to fill those gaps and it doesn't weld as cleanly. So nice tight fitting gap is where we want, what we want to have. So when we're using the belt sander, the belt sander works the exact same way as the disc sander. Um, Difference being, we've got a belt that's going up and down right there versus the disc that spins around right here. The key component you have to remember on each of them is that it is spinning in a downward motion. So when I look at this disc, it's spinning around. This left-hand side of the disc is going down. Likewise, my belt is going down. So all the energy is gonna drive down. It's gonna take my part and it's gonna push my part down. So where do you think you wanna hold your part? Where do you wanna hold your part? On the table. Yeah, you wanna hold it flat on the table. Keep your part right here, flat on the table, the whole time you're working with it. If you try holding your part up in the air, it's gonna jerk your part down like that. So we keep the part right here flat on the table. And then you wanna work it back and forth across the disc or back and forth across the belt. Now, here's where people get into trouble with the belt disc sander. I will tell you that this machine is responsible for some of the more serious injuries that I've ever had in my shop. And this is why. People cut off their piece of metal on the iron worker, and now there's a big burr on the edge of it right here. And I don't know if you can see that in the video, but there's a, a big burr on the edge of my metal. And they just want to sand off that burr. If you take your part and you bring it up to the disc or to the belt, if you lift your part up at an angle like this, what's it going to do to your part? What do you think it's going to do? It's going to throw it up at you. Uh, it's actually going to go the other direction. It's a good guess, and thank you for trying on that one. But what it's going to do is it's going to suck the part down inside this gap between the table and the disc or the belt. 
notice where my fingers are when this happens. So you should be holding your part just like this, going back and forth across the disc. If I pick it up at all, it's gonna suck it down, and now where's my fingers? My fingers are stuck between the metal plate and the disc, and it is going to tear you up. I will tell you I've had this happen to several students over the years. Typically what happens when your part flips up like that, your fingers get stuck in there and it removes your fingernails very, very quickly. So if you've ever had a hang nail or you ever cut your nail a little too long and you had to pull it off, if you think that hurts, you should see what it's like when you have your whole fingernail ripped out of your finger immediately. And yes, you will bleed all over the place and you'll leave a blood trail all the way down to the nurse. Don't bleed on my floor. So when you're using the belt disc sander, we make sure that your part is flat on the table and we don't tip it up at an angle. If I need to file, if I need to get that burr off there, this is the appropriate way to do it. You pick your part up, two hands, and I'm going to angle it down, but I'm holding it up in the air. Now, while I'm holding it up in the air right here, I'll slide this around a little bit for you. While I'm holding it up in the air right here, notice it is angled down in the same direction that the disc is going or that the belt is going. Now it can't get pinched into that table. This is a safe process. This will work out okay. So when using the belt disc sander, metal flat on the table. That's the preferred method. That's good. Pick it up. Hold it at a downward angle. This is also okay. This is fine. Do not, do not have it on the table and pick it up at an angle. If you do this, you will go to the hospital. I'm just, I promise you, you will go to the hospital. Do not do this, okay? Don't hold it at an upward angle because that's where it will rip it out of your hands and rip it towards the table. Okay, that's how we prepped our metal. So we cut our metal off on the iron worker. We cleaned off the rust on the wire wheel grinder. Now we flattened off the edge and got rid of the burrs on the belt disc sander. Any questions on those four? Questions? Okay, let's go take a look at our welder really quick. A couple of things that they didn't cover in the videos that we're gonna cover right now on the arc welder. So wait, Gary. So after when you finish grinding your metal, what should you do after? Um, once you've ground your flat edge, your part. Uh, yeah, I think that's on there, isn't it? Your edge. I forgot to mention that when you're grinding on that belt disc sander, your part is going to get hot. It's going to get very hot. This edge that you're grinding on, if you touch it after you pull it off the disc sander, you will burn yourself. So as soon as you're done grinding that part, take it over to a bucket of water, dunk it in some water to cool it off. Cool your part off in the bucket of water after you're done grinding on it. Um, so if you didn't, weren't able to hear that question on the video, Joe asked, what do you do with your part as soon as you're done grinding on the belt disc sander? The answer is cool it off in some water because this edge will be hot. And you'll feel it when you're holding on to your part. You're going to feel it start to get warm while you're grinding it. Um, don't touch the edge. If you touch the edge, you will burn yourself. You're not going to burn yourself super bad, but it's equivalent to touching a hot frying pan or touching uh, an iron or something like that. Okay. Any other questions? That was a good question. Okay. So now we're going to come over to our welding stations. Um, for those of you that had me in ninth grade metals, you've seen these welding stations before. For those of you that have not, you haven't seen these. Um, our welding stations basically look something like this right here. Um, you'll notice we have these curtains all the way around the welding stations. You do need to have the curtains pulled shut because the welders do produce a tremendous amount of light. I'm going to show you right now a couple of items on the welders that they didn't show you in the videos. Um, just items that you need to be aware of when you start welding in the shop. First things first, we talked about clothes. <clears throat> Make
make sure your clothes, especially your blue jeans, don't have any tears or tatters in them. No frizzies on them because those will catch on fire. You need to make sure you're wearing shoes or boots, some kind of something that's covering up your toes because sparks will go on the floor. Then when we're welding, you're going to wear a flame retardant jacket. This will keep the sparks off of your shirt. Um, you do need to wear these when you are welding with the arc welders or the wire feed welders. So I'm going to put one of these on really quick. I button them all the way up and I also like to pop the collar up just because I like to look cool. It's not because I want to look cool. Sometimes I look cool. So I flip the collar up like this because the collar keeps sparks from going down in, into my shirt. Um, if you've ever done this before, you will know that sparks go flying out and the sparks will try to go down in your shirt and that sucks. You don't want that. Um, so other pieces of equipment that we need to wear when we're welding. You need to make sure you're wearing some welding gloves. The leather gloves protect your hands from the light that's gonna come off the arc welder as well as all the sparks that are coming off the arc welder. Every welding booth has leather gloves, so we're gonna make sure we have leather gloves on. The other piece that we need to wear, we have to wear a full face helmet with a number 10 lens. So here in the metal shop, we've got a whole bunch of solid state number 10 lens welding helmets. We also have some of these that are auto darkeners. So when we first look at it, you can actually see through that lens. And I think you can kind of see through that lens right now, even on the video. As soon as I strike an arc and the bright light hits this lens, the lens will shade to a number 10 shade um, lens. You have to wear a number 10 shade lens if you're watching somebody weld or you are welding. If you don't, you're gonna burn your eyes and it sucks. Um, we call that flash burn. It lasts two or three days, but it's a very painful, very miserable two or three days. So I'm gonna put the helmet on. I adjust the helmet right back here to make sure it fits on my head and the helmet should sit right there. When I go to weld, I simply pull the helmet down and then I can go ahead and weld. Okay, so I've got all of my clothing on that I'm gonna wear when I'm welding. I've got my gloves, I've got my helmet, we're good to go. I gotta adjust this a little bit. So right here is one of my welding tables that we're gonna practice on. You need to make sure that your, your table is grounded out with the ground side grounding clamp of your welder. They covered that in the video. I'm then gonna take my metal that I cleaned up and I'm gonna put my metal on the table. If I'm working on a bigger project and I can't put the project on the table, then I put the grounding clamp right on the project itself. Either way, it doesn't matter. We just gotta make sure that the metal we're gonna weld on is grounded. Mr. Geary, so I just thought about this. When you're cleaning the metal, do you have to clean the whole piece of metal or just the area where you're welding? Um, it's a good question. Um, for what we're doing right now, you can just clean off the area that you're gonna weld on. Um, it's a good habit to clean all the metal. So in this case, I'm gonna just run one stringer bead right here, so I only clean that up. If you're in the lab and you're welding in the lab, I would clean the whole piece of metal because then I could put a stringer bead here and then another one and then another one and another one. And I could do stringer beads all the way down my piece of metal. So I would clean up the whole piece of metal. For the sake of the video, I just cleaned it up where I wanna do a weld right here. Good question. Any other questions? Okay, so for you guys, if you have not welded before, I know a couple of you have, um, but for the rest of you, when we start arc welding, it's, it's just like any other new um, skill that you've never done before. If you've never gone bowling before, I don't expect you to pick up a bowling ball and bowl a perfect game. You're gonna have to learn, and there's gonna be some practice involved. And that's really how welding works. You've got to learn how to do some of the basics and we, we kind of gradually learn how to crawl and then we learn how to walk and then we eventually learn how to run. All we're doing for Metals 1 is learning how to crawl and walk a little bit. And on distance learning, if I can get you guys running stringer beads, we're going to be in really good shape. 
if we were in class doing metals one, we would be doing um, butt welds and lap welds and some T welds. For those of you that have done welds before, you can kind of move ahead and do some of those different um, advanced welds. For those of you that haven't, we just, we're gonna learn how to run stringer beads. And they showed you the stringer beads in the video. Because we wanna start easy, we're going to use a 6013 welding rod. And it says it right here on my welding rod, what kind of rod we're using. I like my beginning welders to use a 6013 because it strikes an arc really easy. It carries the bead really easy. It's pretty simple to learn on. It's not necessarily the best rod out there, but it's a good beginner rod. Um, so when we're welding, we need to put the 6013 60, rod, we're gonna put it in the electrode holder. My electrode holder has grooves in it, and we're gonna put the bare metal end. You can see there, this end right here is bare metal. This end is all the rest of it's covered in flux. And that was in the prior videos. Put the bare metal end into your electrode holder. And then we're going to try to start a weld. And I'm gonna move the camera right up here. So now you guys can see the metal right here. When you're gonna weld, we wanna hold on with two hands. The steadier your hands are, the steadier your hands are, the better your weld is going to be. When we wanna strike a weld, I know in the video they said you can scratch or you can just bring it down. Some people are steady enough that they can bring it down. I will tell you from experience, most students will not be able to just bring it to the metal and start an arc. It's much easier to lay your rod kind of flat and scratch your rod on the metal like you're trying to strike a match. If you've ever lit a stick match, it's just like trying to light a stick match. So scratch your rod on the metal. You'll notice we're gonna scratch it and then I'm gonna roll it up like this. So we roll it up. I'm gonna hold the rod about a half inch in the air and I'm gonna count one 1,000. It takes that long for the rod to get hot and start to melt as well as my base metal to get hot and to turn into liquid to receive the welding rod. So we're gonna scratch it. We're gonna get a rod, uh, arc going. We're gonna hold it up. We're gonna count one 1,000. And then I'm gonna bring my rod down so that my rod is just very lightly scratching on my metal. I don't wanna push the rod hard onto the metal and I don't want to have a big gap between my rod and the metal. I wanna keep the rod right there and it's gonna sit on the leading edge of the puddle. Now, you guys saw videos of this last week, so I'm not gonna shoot a video. I have no idea what an arc would look like on my camera, on my computer, and so I'm not gonna try it right now. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag it along slow and steady. You wanna build up a puddle that is about the size of your fingernail. The puddle should be about twice the width of your rod, and I tell all my students, get a puddle that's about the size of your fingernail. So I'm just dragging it along, keeping my rod at about a 15 degree angle, and I just drag it along slow and steady so my puddle is about the width of my fingernail. Hold on one second, I got a demo piece here for you. Okay. So we can see on this weld right here, there's a weld right there. Now, granted, this was a wire feed weld, but we can see the weld is about the size of my fingernail. Um, likewise, that one or this one right here. That's kind of what we're looking for. We're gonna end up with nice U-shaped rings on there. The weld will be coming out of my metal a little bit, um, but not stacking up. We don't want the weld to stack up. If your weld gets really skinny, kind of like it right here, that means we're going too fast. If the weld gets really wide and fat, it means you're going too slow. I will tell you very few students go too slow. Almost every student I have is gonna go too fast. And it's just the simple um, fact that you're a beginning welder. It's just the way it is. Now, when we're done with the weld, they showed you this in the video, we're gonna take our chipping hammer, we're gonna chip the slag off the weld. A couple of things they didn't show you in the video is what do you do with the weld after you get done welding on it? 
Once you weld on your piece of metal, your metal was just red hot or it will still be red hot. Do not pick that metal up with your hands. Do not pick that metal up with your welding gloves. I watched on the video, they welded on a piece of metal and then the guy reached down and he grabbed his metal with the gloves. If you grab that metal with your gloves, your hand will be okay. You're not gonna hurt your hand but you are going to destroy these gloves. These gloves will get all burned up and then the fingers are rock hard and you can't bend your fingers anymore. Do not pick up your hot metal with the gloves. We pick up our hot metal with players. Every single welding booth here has players. We're gonna pick your metal. We're gonna bring it over to our bucket of water and we have buckets of water um, on either end of the welding booths and we're going to plunge it into the water. Very first thing you do with your piece of metal when you are done welding is you plunge it in the water to cool it off. Um, number one injury I have in the shop, number one for sure, is people getting burned on hot metal. So do not grab the metal with the gloves. Do not grab it with your hands. Do not hand me hot metal. I tend to get quite irritated when people hand me burning hot red metal. Um, Let's see, what else did I miss? Oh, one more item that they didn't cover in the videos. When you go to start your weld, I said we're gonna scratch it like this, and we're gonna hold it up, and then we'll bring the rod down to your metal. This will happen to every one of you at some point in time. I've been welding for 35 years, it still happens to me. When you bring your rod down or you start welding, your rod might stick to the metal. We, we literally call it sticking the rod. It's, it's, there's nothing else to call it. So when you stick the rod onto the metal, you will hear your welder bog down. It's gonna go burr. It's because you have a direct short. You have a direct short and you're pumping full amperage through the rod to the metal. We need to get that rod off the metal. Do not, do not, do not shut off the welder when the rod is stuck on the metal. What should you do to get the rod off the metal? It was in your worksheet. Nobody remembers. You need to take, go ahead. Wiggle it off. Yeah, you want to twist it back and forth like this, and you can break it off. So if your rod sticks to the metal, do not shut off the welder. Twist the rod back and forth, and it's going to break the rod off. If you twist it back and forth, and you can't get the rod to break free, Simply squeeze the electrode holder handle right here. We're going to squeeze the electrode holder and just take the electrode holder off the rod. You can always take the rod out of the electrode holder. The rod will be stuck on your metal, but you're not going to, it's not going to damage the welder. If you shut the welder off when it's under a direct short, you will blow the welder up and you will be very scared because it literally sounds like a shotgun going off. Um, but more so you're going to destroy the welder. So please do not shut the welder off when you stick the rod. When you're done welding and your rod is off the metal, then yes, absolutely shut the welder off before you put the electrode holder on the table. If you have a rod in your electrode holder and your welder is on and you set this on the table, it will start arcing. It's going to start arcing and it's going to start welding so don't place the rod and electrode holder on the table while the welder's on you can take it and hook it on the handle right here so i can hook that handle i can do this Whoop. i can do that so long as this tip doesn't bend down and touch the table if it does it's going to start arcing so we can go like that and then we can go shut it off that's perfectly fine um but shut your welder off when you're done. Um, do not shut the welder off if your rod is stuck. Okay, so we get to Friday, open lab. What are you going to be doing? You're going to cut out a piece of metal. You're going to clean up your piece of metal, just like I did. We are going to come over to our welding booth. We're gonna start running stringer beads. Plain old stringer beads just like this. Once you can run a stringer bead and it's a perfect smooth stringer bead, 
all the other welds are really pretty easy. The biggest thing is just learning how to run a smooth, consistent, tight stringer bead. And that's all we're going to do. Once you can do this, then I'll show you how to do a butt weld. And once you can do a butt weld, I'll show you how to do a lap weld. Um, so like I said, it's going to be practice. We have to build ourselves up, learning how to just get the stringer beads going first. Questions from you guys. What questions do you have right now about the arc welder? No questions right now. Okay, so this week, um, you need to do the worksheet that I just put on the canvas right now that goes with this presentation. I will have one other assignment that I'm gonna be putting on canvas tomorrow. It's the one that will drag into Friday as well. If you're coming into open lab, you won't have to do that assignment. That assignment, you're automatically covered on that assignment if you come in for open lab. If you don't come in for open lab, then you have to do that assignment that I'm putting on there for tomorrow. Um, so you have this worksheet with this presentation today. There's gonna be a, a video and a worksheet for tomorrow. Um, if you're not coming into open lab, you might as well just start on that one tomorrow. If you are coming into open lab, you won't need to do that one, okay? Otherwise, next week, when we get into next week, um, we will be Google meeting every Monday and Wednesday. We're not gonna Google meet tomorrow. However, you still need to log into Canvas. You need to log into Canvas Thursday and Friday. Even though we're not doing a class meeting, we're not doing a Google Meet, you still need to log into Canvas because that's how I'm gonna do attendance. So make sure you're logging into Canvas, um, both Thursday, both Friday, and then we'll have our next Google Meet on Monday. Questions on that? Okay, if you did not get the worksheet completed or you're gonna do it tomorrow, this video, this presentation right here, will be on canvas um it's gonna it takes about a half hour for google to download them to my email but then i'll have it on my drive i'll stick it on canvas you can go back and reference this video again all right um trying to think if there's anything else i need oh sign up for open lab if you're planning on coming in for open lab you need to make sure you have all your assignments done in canvas the all assignments need to be done in canvas before you can come in to open lab. Um, if you do sign up for open lab and you're not done for everything, you got between now and Friday to get everything done so that you can come into open lab, okay? Questions on open lab or anything else that's due or questions on the video. All right, I'm gonna start, uh, stop the recording of this right now. If you guys have any questions, um, you can hang out on the